When you think about mythology and classical antiquity, what comes first to your mind? If you're anything like me, you might find you've forgotten some or even many of the details, that is, until you watch or listen to a retelling or reinterpretation and you feel a strong sense of recollection or familiarity with certain characters and events. Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Yana, also known as Jana, and today I'm reviewing Mythos, the Greek Myths Reimagined, written and read by the British actor and comedian Stephen Fry. Every now and then, I come across an audiobook that's so entertaining and so deliciously enjoyable that I limit myself to listening to just an hour or less each day, allowing me to savor it longer. Mythos is that kind of audiobook. Fry's drollery and British brand of humor endlessly amuse me. And lines like, Kronos has an unkind habit of eating anyone prophesied to conquer him, or Apollo must have been in a soft mood that day, for he did not slaughter King Midas on the spot. Fry's narration and witty commentary sprinkled throughout this audiobook will not disappoint fans, so even if you're not particularly interested in mythology, you'll probably still enjoy this listen. Edith Hall's 2017 book review of Mythos in The Guardian argues that although this book is promoted as a retelling of Greek myths, it really only covers the lesser-known myths including Hesiod's Theogony, which is the birth of the gods and creation of the first few generations of humans, Apuleius' Latin novel, The Golden Ass, which highlights Cupid and Psyche's romance, and Ovid's Metamorphoses, which stars Arachne, Midas, Echo, and Narcissus. I agree with her, but actually I find it refreshing. As far as I'm concerned, there is no shortage of material about myth cycles that rehashes, yet again, the Siege of Troy in Odysseus's Tales, Agamemnon, Clytemnestra, Jason, Medea, and the Argonauts, or the Theban royal house of Oedipus and Antigone. Don't get me wrong, those are all still keepers, but the bar has been set higher than ever when it comes to retelling those particular tales with any sense of originality or relevance. And, if you're an audible listener, Check out Stephen Fry's 15-hour-long audiobook supplement about Greek heroes that came out in April 2020. I haven't listened to it yet, but it sounds like a good one to add to my list. Now, turning back to Mythos, an especially delightful surprise you don't want to miss out on will be Fry's appendix of notes at the end. I know it sounds odd, but hear me out. Fry succinctly illuminates centuries of scholarship and debate, including that about the myth of Pandora's jar, and apparently the more common translation of Pandora's box is based on a mistranslation. You may also recall that in the story, she traps hope in a jar after unwittingly releasing all manner of evils on humanity. This has always seemed a bit bleak to me, since our modern phrase of abandoning hope definitely has negative connotations, but Fry share some ancient Greek and even relatively modern perspectives from Nietzsche. Abandoning hope spares us from delusions, and it allows humanity to face reality as it is, rather than the false promise of something good to come. And so, those interpretations actually underscore Pandora's imprisonment of hope as a triumphant act, something that saves us from Zeus's worst cruelty. Finally, although Fry insists that Greek myths are for everyone and require no traditional classical education whatsoever, I do not recommend this book for young children. The vast majority of the stories involve some sort of gruesome violence, pain, or suffering. Ultimately, this lesson is for adult fans of Stephen Fry and mythology enthusiasts, and I certainly fit that bill on both counts. So check it out! That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you haven't yet done so, please consider subscribing to my podcast and sharing your ratings on whichever platform you use. 
I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well.